Hello everybody, Dustin Young here with Loam Roamer and today I am going to do the walk around on my Mondraker F Podium RR DC, although this is just a F Podium RR that I built that way. So uh, it's the, the traditional F Podium RR frame. The bike is about 24 and a half pounds, 23 and a half pounds with no pedals, none of the garbage. That's your, you know, racy weight kind of uh, the way a, a bike shop would tell you it weighs because it's the marketing spin. But um, I'm 24 and a half to 26 pounds, depending on what's strapped to it at the time. Uh, that's its riding weight, pedals, everything on it, exactly how it gets ridden. So, um, and that varies by whether or not I have a light on it. Uh, for night riding and all that good stuff. But that, those are the rider weights uh, where I ride it. When I'm running the Wild AMs, uh, which I'm not right now, I'm 26 and a half pounds uh, all set up. And when I'm, I'm running no light, um, no uh, none of the accessories that I'll sometimes strap to it for, for uh, just having on the bike, uh, it uh, is down to 24 and a half pounds. Uh, a Maxxis forecast in the front, Recon Race in the rear is, is where it's 24 and a half. So, my preference is normally not Max's tires, uh, but they, the forecasts are such a good, really light wet weather tire, it's, it's hard to complain about that tire. So let me get into the bike a little bit. So let's, let's start here again, Mondraker F Podium RR frame. Uh, I did take off the remote lockout and just to add a switch. I'm not sure if I had to do that again, I might leave it. Um, this bike says it's live valve compatible. Uh, when I did live valve on another bike, I did rear only. I would prefer that on this as well. Uh, it works so good um, for a bike like this. It would be great. Um, mostly this bike I run either open or locked. So the two position lockout was actually something I took off before I rode it and might do that differently. Uh, Fox Factories mentioned. Um, I am running full axis, uh, you know, the RockShock axis and the SRAM axis or derailleur. Um, running the Mimic, testing my wife's Mimic saddle. Um, I threw that on there. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty dang good. I was told it was gonna be good. Uh, it, it is really good. Like, I can't believe how good that saddle rides, how comfortable it is. Um, the Specialized did a killer job, just really nailed it with that saddle. I'm running rev grips. Um, I'm running the narrower rev grips because it's a cross country bike. Um, they help, they're nice. Um, you know, I like the look, that's part of it. Um, and they do work and um, it does give you some added suspension and I've got these set up loose so it does give you some take away some of the hand fatigue I'm running the one-up bars um, 20 mil rise on this bike uh, they are cut to 750 uh, I can do a hand I'm gonna do a how to do your handles I'm gonna do a bike setup video I think bike setup is an interesting thing and people instead of building the bike they, they go out they've done something for so long so they try something else and they're like oh, I don't like it but they, they don't ride it long enough to understand how correct it is and how awesome it feels. So we'll get back to this walk around, but I think, I think I'm gonna get into that. Uh, I am running an empty stem uh, and uh, I threaded this, and this is the threaded version of the one up EDC system. And from 76 out of, I believe France, uh, I threw this on there. So if I wanna run the Garmin, normally I just, normally I just run my watch, my Phoenix 6X, but sometimes I wanna run the computer because I wanna be able to see more data when I'm cranking. SRAM G2 Ultimate Brakes. Um, you gotta love the look that Axis creates. It gets rid of all that crazy cabling going on. Um, I think it's great. I think that the Magura system where all the brake lines go in and everything would be pretty rad too. It'd make a bike look good. Uh, I am running a Fox 34 Step Cast. I think had the new Sid Ultimate Carbon Fork come out, I'd probably be running that. Um, I, but in, in this was out when I built the bike, so I am running the step cast. It, I'm not a big fan of Fit4. I wish I could throw the Grip2 damper in again. While I want to race this bike, I also want to ride this bike hard. Um, I didn't race this year, and boy, it shows. But uh, this bike was built originally because I was going to do some endurance racing on it. I was actually going to race Downeyville on it. It was with the Wild AMs. I literally, the bike was built to race Downeyville, and everything else it raced was, was whatever. But um, I, I'm running DT Swiss 180 hubs and uh, we are one. I'm running a union on the front and a faction on the back. I love we are one wheels. I got four sets now. I love their wheels. Um, I haven't had to true them. I beat the tar out of them. They're great wheels. And, and again, their customer service is awesome, um, which is something I'm, I'm big on. Um, I'm running the 
XTR center lock rotors. Um, good rotors. Um, everything works there. Light works great. I mean, what do you say about those? Um, but uh, the DT Swiss 180 hubs, that's an interesting conversation. The front hub is spectacular. The rear hub has already had to go back. Uh, within 90 days, it had to go back and have the bearings redone. Ceramic bearings, sort of a risk I took, I guess. I knew that going in, but I did have to do uh, ceramic bearing replacement. You can kind of see. I have the axis paddle upgrade for the shifters coming. I just haven't gotten them yet. And I did uh, put a fender on it. Um, I had an extra one for 36, so I just trimmed it up. Uh, I didn't bother to buy the 34 one that you know would have fit perfect. Um, I'm running a Hellbender bottom bracket, uh, fantastic bottom bracket. I did have to have that one warranty replaced once. A little surprising, but they fixed it. It was, um, it didn't last long at all. So something must have happened. It was out of tolerance. Um, but that thing's been nothing but perfect ever since it got replaced. Um, you build enough bikes, you're bound to end up with some janky parts. That's just the way it goes. I would not say that there's anything wrong with Hellbender bottom brackets or any Hellbender bearing. I run Cane Creek 110s in a lot of stuff. Um, I love their bearings. So I had one go bad, one in 20 bottom brackets. That doesn't hurt my feelings at all. Um, you know, at least they last, uh, unlike some of the, you know, and cheap bottom brackets are great too, right? They're 30 bucks, you replace them once a year, who cares, right? It's just part of maintaining your bike. So. Um, the G2 Ultimate, I don't know if you can see the red in there. I am running MTX brake pads. Uh, I, I love MTX brake pads. Um, when they, if, if you have not run or read or heard about the MTX brake pads, they're a ceramic, um, a ceramic material brake pad. They brought motocross or street bike or just good brake pads down to mountain biking. Most of the brake pads are, they're not that great. Um, these, the modulation and stopping power of these brakes went through the roof. And by stopping power, I don't mean how hard could I lock it up, but I mean how much, let's call it brake control. The brake control went through the roof. Um, they give you incredible brake control and they're quiet. Quiet in the rain, quiet in the dry, quiet in the dust. They're just quiet. Um, I had one howl a little bit. I think I got it dirty on a ride and it, even it went away. It didn't contaminate and fall apart and become a useless brake pad. So um, the other thing is they last. Um, all summer on these brake pads, and I rode this bike a good 500 or 600 miles, and the brake pads still look, you know, 50, 60%. So I got no worries there. You know, they're gonna last. I love them. Uh, kudos, MTX. You have built an awesome part for mountain biking, and it's awesome to see somebody bring technology to mountain biking from motorsports um, that that truly works. All right, so the We Are One, you know, again running a faction in the rear, uh, mostly for weight purposes. E13, um, I'm doing their TRS race. I guess they call it their gravel crank or their cross country crank. It is stupid light. I can't get an oval for it, so I'm running their ultra light. Um, I'm running a 34 tooth chain ring there. Um, and then you can see I've sort of smacked that thing a few times. The nice thing about an axis derailleur is you can actually smack it hard and not knock it out of alignment and not mess up every, the derailleur hanger or anything. So pretty rad, um, you know. And then I'm running the X01 because it's the lightest cassette. Again, this bike was a lot about weight. So, you know, I might've been able to run Eagle, the gold, but you know, it weighs a little bit more. And so I made that choice because this bike again is a lot about weight because of what it was designed to do. Um, this bike is just smashes downhill um, for what it is. Um, you know, it's it's got a pretty slack head angle for a cross country bike. I think I'm um, with the, 120 mil fork I've got on it. Uh, and the way this thing is, I'm at 66.2 or 66.5 right there. Either way, for a cross country bike, it's uh, got a nice slack front end. Again, uh, 750 mil bars, 170 mil cranks. I normally run 165 mil cranks. I'm 5'8", I'm I have a 30 inch inseam. Uh, so those cranks actually 165, even 160 would measure out better uh, for bike fitting purposes. But um, 170 is what's on this because it's, what's available, it's kind of how you, what you live with, with mountain biking. So um, again, the, I've got Axis, a reverb. Um, I've thrown in a few tie bolts, but most of, the, most of the stuff already had tie in it. The Mondraker frame weighs nothing, partly because of that. And then all the SRAM stuff came with tie, because it was all their, all their high-end stuff. So um, that's the build of the bike. Um, it's a pretty rad bike. The thing is, 
really fast. Uh, the handling of the bike is spectacular. Um, you, can, you can launch this bike and feel really comfortable. I'm not saying you're coming off of 10 foot drops, you'd be, uh, you'd be crying yourself a river there, but um, this bike can definitely take and, uh, take and haul some serious butt. Um, it, it is, this bike is, is not slow whatsoever. Mondraker did a killer job of building just an amazing race bike here. Um, I built this thing up from the frame. It, it was a really fun build. It's too bad it didn't get raced this year, but it definitely got ridden. And uh, I'm really actually looking forward to getting the race in 21. Hopefully, hopefully uh, vaccine kicks some ass and we get back out to having some fun and, and living our lives. So uh, happy new year to everybody. Looking forward to 2021. Hope you're all having an awesome day. Like my channel if you like the video, comment, subscribe ring the bell that way you know if i put out anything new and i look forward to uh, reviewing products that uh, i paid for nobody gave me for free i got no discounts uh, so when i tell you what it is it's something i actually wanted to buy and something i wanted to build and i'm not trying to get you to buy something that they're giving me money to uh, sell to you um, that's going to be a big part of my thing and if i ever do get a discount on something that's pretty big or i do get something i'll absolutely let you know but any review you've ever seen from me so far that's the gig for me. Uh, um, I will tell you, I told you I'm running a recon race and a forecaster. Uh, just to hit on that real quick again. I am not a big fan of Max's tires. Um, I, I mean, they're, they're sort of the known, it's not that they're bad tires, but they're not always awesome tires. I think there's way better tires, especially for way better pricing out there than Maxxis. And I think it's, if you would try some of them like, the Michelin Wild Enduros and Wild AMs are spectacular tires. Of course, the Magic Mary is super popular by Schwalbe, and uh, that's an amazing wet weather tire. But you know, when you look at um, some of the other tires that are out there to run, I'm going to do review. I, I got a year out of my Wild Enduros and tore them apart in Tahoe. So I will tell you, and the traction was spectacular. So um, just you know, there's there's some really amazing tires out there um, that you might really like given the opportunity. Um, and you're, you know, you can get a pair of them sometimes, which will pay for one uh, Maxxis tire. And in, the price of Maxxis tires isn't because they're better; it's because they can. So, um, you know, that's one of my one of my things out there. So, anyway, uh, it's just my opinion, but uh, it is my opinion. So, anyway, looking forward to um, again a great 2021. Thanks for watching my video, and I look forward to seeing everybody again on here soon.